Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode on the Pokus Club channel. This week, we will continue to cover the basic ultrasound applications according to the Royal College of Emergency Medicine's Level 1 syllabus. And this is peripheral IV access with ultrasound guidance. This is one of the most common procedures that you or I as clinicians would perform at the bedside. And it is really important to learn this application well. If you, you have really enjoyed the content on the show, please remember to subscribe to the channel and ring the bell to be notified of any further updates and uploads to the channel. According to the YouTube analysis, 50% of our listeners and viewers are not actually subscribed to the channel. So if you subscribe, that would help this channel greatly. My name is Nicholas Lim. I am an EM and ICU consultant based out of Singapore. And today I am going to teach you about ultrasound guided peripheral IV access. Why should we be doing this? This is one of the most common procedures that a lot of clinicians already do. And why would we need to use IV uh, ultrasound guidance to facilitate this procedure? If all your patients look like this, then I would suggest that the ultrasound machine is not what you need. However, in reality, most of our patients look like this or this. We may be looking after special populations like pediatrics or patients who are undergoing chemotherapy or dialysis where vascular access can be quite challenging because all the veins have been used prior to this already. The worst thing to have to say to the patient is this, especially when you have ultrasound readily available. The evidence base for this is pretty strong. This was published in the Annals of Emergency Medicine in 2005, and it showed that the success rate for cannulation went from 33% to 97% if you use ultrasound. A lot of us physicians are really concerned about the cost opportunity. And that is, if I didn't go to set up the ultrasound device, you know, I could probably have gone to see another patient or I've gone to have done something else or maybe gone for a coffee. Taking the ultrasound probe does, does take some time as we're learning a new technique. However, this study showed that the overall time to successful cannulation improved. So if you used ultrasound, it took 13 minutes versus 30 minutes without ultrasound. It also showed that it took less time to success from first puncture, 4 minutes versus 15. And it showed that it reduced the number of sticks required to get a successful cannula in. Okay, Because let's face it, one time is just too many. Let's go through which vein we would probably select. And when we talk about ultrasound-guided IV access, it's mostly with veins in the upper arm, mostly. And we are really looking at the basilic vein or the cephalic vein. Sometimes you may be able to cannulate the brachial vein. This is the location of the veins that we would probably target. So this view is a view of the mid-upper arm and shows the basilic vein as well as the brachial neurovascular bundle. There may be significant variation in the vein position. And as you can see, sometimes it's just impossible to, to cannulate the brachial vein. Your target really in this case would be the basilic vein. Let's talk about preparation and logistics. Let's talk about the position first. My two colleagues here, Sarah and Carl, they're going to show you the various positions that you could possibly cannulate someone in. In this case, the ultrasound machine is away from Carl's line of sight. He has to look away to view the image on the ultrasound machine. As you can see, it is not very ergonomic here. In this case, it is better. It's in front of him, but he still has to move his head to the right in order to catch a view of the veins. Over here is the best, where he places the ultrasound machine 
across from the bed. And all he has to do is look up with his eyes, look down at the cannula, look up at his eyes, look down at the cannula as he's guiding the cannula into the vein. So how do we pick a vein? The vein is the compressible structure. It is non-pulsatile. Sometimes you notice as well that the wall of the vein is a lot thinner. And these are a few points that can help you distinguish between a vein from an artery. Let's set up the machine as well by adjusting the gain. Okay, This is too little gain. And then this is just right. And this is probably too much gain over here, where even the insides of the vein appear hyperechoic. Setting the depth is very important. That was too, too much depth. This is too little depth. And this is probably just right. Needle selection is particularly important as well. As you can see, the smaller gauge needles are actually quite short. And for if you're looking to cannulate a deeper vein, it may not actually be long enough to get in there. We would suggest that a 2.5 inch or about 5 centimeter cannula is the minimum of uh, what is required. And this is just to demonstrate that the much shorter cannula only has a small amount of the tip in the vein itself, whereas the longer cannula actually sits a lot better within the vein. So a couple of things here. We talk about technique now. The first one, which can be a little bit controversial, but just bear, bear me up here. Bevel down. Approach this procedure with the bevel down. I have looked through the literature and there is nothing to suggest that going bevel up actually improves your success rate. In fact, I think it sometimes works against us when we use ultrasound. There's always the long debate about the long versus the short axis. And... Initially, I used to prefer the short axis kind of view uh, to guide the tip, tip in, but a combination of the two may be the better of, of the, the lot, wherein you use the short axis to guide the tip in and then the long axis to confirm the position of the cannula. One of the most important parts is to follow the tip of the cannula, and I will show you this in a little bit. Right at the last moment before you enter the vein, you need to change the angle of the uh, cannula. So, why bevel down? Let's have a look at this. So, IV cannula going in the usual dogmatic way, which is the bevel up. One of the reasons why I suggest bevel down is that the visibility of the needle is a lot better. And this is why ultrasound beam projects down, hits the bevel. The bevel is a lot more angulated the ultrasound beams get reflected away from the uh, transducer. However, if you approach this with bevel down, you can see that the ultrasound beam hits the flat part of the needle. More of the ultrasound beams reflect back as well. A lot of people, when they cannulate without ultrasound, they use the flashback. So they see the flashback, they can advance the cannula. With ultrasound, I would suggest that you don't actually look for the flashback. With the bevel up, you can very easily pierce the vein and get a flashback. But when you go to advance, the cannula just will not advance. So long axis. This is where inserting the needle is in the plane of the transducer. Okay, So you will see, the, you will get a very nice image of the tip of the needle approaching the vein, piercing the vein, and then the cannula deploying. The reality of the situation is that not many veins are so straight and it may be quite difficult. You may not have enough space to actually perform a long axis view in some cases. The short axis is where you are going out of plane to the transducer. So you insert the needle in a transverse manner and this is how it looks. So you can see the tip of the needle appears as this hyperechoic structure. It approaches the vein, pierces the vein and you are following the tip the whole time. And what do I mean by that? So again, we show this, bevel down, ultrasound beam hits the transducer, projects an image. As you push the needle in, as you advance with the needle, you also move the probe to find the tip of the needle each and every single time. So your probe is always at the tip of the needle until it gets into the vein, in the middle of the vein. And you can even follow 
the tip of the needle within the vein for a significant distance. And I'll show you this in a little video later on. So let's look at this. You can see I am moving the transducer as I'm advancing the needle. Okay, and I guide it all the way into the center of the needle. I do not look for flashback. I am just looking for the tip of the needle. This is a video from my colleagues in Heraklion in Crete, Nicholas Sabrakis and his group. So here they are doing a landmark scan with the ultrasound transducer. They found a suitable vein. They're going to give it a clean with some uh, chlorhexidine or alcohol and prep the surface. Now they take a needle of an appropriate length and they insert the needle. Now, watch as they track the needle tip in the center of the vein. They are moving the transducer as they are advancing the needle. They are not watching for the flashback. With the ultrasound, you can actually advance the needle a significant length of the way without actually it hitting off the wall, just because you can see it the whole time. There we go, okay? You can see the needle is all the way in. Now they take the, the cannula out. Okay, so let's talk about some issues that people face when they cannulate someone with uh, ultrasound guidance. So these are all comments that I've gotten from trainees and colleagues, and they're all anonymous. I get flashback, but cannot advance the cannula. What's the problem there? Usually what this is, is that they have gone bevel up. They have looked for the flashback, as you would if you were not using ultrasound. And once they get the flashback, you can see that the tip of the needle is literally just within the, the vein. Some image shows that it looks like the needle is within the vein itself. But in actual fact, most of the plastic cannula is not. So when they see the flashback, it does not mean that the needle is right in the middle of the vein. And when they try to advance the plastic cannula, the cannula will not advance. And that's why you see this uh, when they try to take out the, the cannula after all of this, it's all bent and out of shape. The next common problem that I get a lot of is, I am in the middle of the vein, but I cannot advance it. Why is that? Okay, And that is because they haven't actually followed the tip of the needle. So if you look at this, when the needle has actually completely passed through the vein, with the ultrasound beam, if you're not at the tip of the needle, it can appear that the needle is actually in the middle of the vein. However, if you track it to the end of the needle or the tip of the needle, you can see that it's well past the vein. Okay, so follow the tip. Another common one, I've inserted the cannula and I've confirmed it, it's in the middle of the vein and all that, but it didn't last very long. And this has got to do with the angle and how much of the cannula is actually within the vein itself. So in this case, the approach has been really, really shallow. You can see how that uh, this is really the extremes of the length of the cannula and that only a small part of this white bit is actually within the vein itself. The majority of the cannula is in skin and subcutaneous tissue. The approach has to be at 45 degrees, sometimes even more, in order to get the appropriate length of the cannula within the vein. If you don't have a significant amount of cannula within the vein, if you push uh, IV fluid or if you push contrast, or if the patient even moves their arm, this cannula can get dislodged. So make sure that your angle of approach is high enough, 45 degrees or more. Okay, I'm coming to the end of my lecture. These are the take home points. So make sure you use the bevel down. Go with the bevel down. There is no evidence to suggest that going bevel up improves the success. Most modern cannulas are sharp enough that you are still able to enter the vein with the bevel down. And as I said, the needle is a whole lot more visible when you go bevel down, bevel up. 
ultrasound beams get reflected away. They don't come back to the transducer and the needle doesn't look as clear. You can see more of the ultrasound beams reflect back, clearer image. Now, following the tip of the needle is really important. As we said, follow, as you insert the needle, as you advance the needle, make sure you move your transducer at the same time. Follow the, the tip of the needle into the vein and significantly more. Initially, if you have not done this before, getting used to holding the probe with your non-dominant hand and then tracking the needle which you are holding in your dominant hand can seem quite difficult. And trust me, when I first started doing this, it hurt real bad too. But the solution to this is to keep practicing. Practice, practice, practice. Use the phantoms, use homemade phantoms, Try and approach uh, patients, even though you know that they are uh, easy cannulations, try and do it with ultrasound guidance just to get a feel of the coordination required. And that is me. If you have any questions, you can email me at this email address. You can follow or block me on Twitter. If you like this video, make sure you like it because that lets YouTube know that uh, this video is good. Talk to you soon.